Hey, what's up guys and girls? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a real quick video on how to remove your third row seat out of your E70 X5. Um, now the reason I'm removing mine is because we're going on a road trip and I want to put a full size uh, wheel and tire in here because um, we're literally going from California to New York and I really don't want to have a spare to deal with. Um, plus, you know, it's a little bit more work to put on a full size wheel in here than to put a spare in. Um, so this is a temporary thing for me and we're going to probably put the seat back in, but um, it's really simple. All you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver and a T50 Torx uh, plus, you know, like a wrench with an extension. <clears throat> Everything is reachable. There's only one part that's a little bit difficult and I'll tell you what it is. Now, I already removed my seat, so I'm just going to kind of like walk you through and I'll, t I'll give you a couple of hints here on the part that's difficult of what I did to kind of get around it. Uh, without having to remove way more panels than you actually have to, okay? Um, so let me just side. Okay, what you want to do is get this thing out. It's just a couple of screws. One, two, three. And then there's two on the inside under this cubby. Um, also, there's another one that goes right here. It just has uh, these little plastic clips in it. I believe it was three. You could pull them out. On, I, pull, I was able to pull them off my fingers, but you can put a screwdriver in there. They're really easy to remove. You just want to pull that out. So basically, that'll give you the access to the battery, and then this will be nice and clean, clear. And then you'll have access to take this uh, bolt right here for the T50. And then there's also, so I put, I reattached, sorry, it's a little dark. Um, I reattached my seed belt here temporarily so it's not wobbling around. But basically, there's one here and one here. Um, just pull up the little panel that's behind the seats that moves. And you'll have access to that and then this one basically you'll probably want to take off um, this panel here what it does is it covers up this side um, there is also where the the hook is there's one of these little panels so first you want to take this off as you can see it doesn't really have any real clips you just kind of have to like wiggle it around to take it off and then you'll be able to pop this one off which has kind of like those traditional BMW so it's like one two and three I lost my middle one somewhere um, but you want to do that on basically this side and that side and that will give you access to this bolt and then that bolt also in the front right there and right there there's a couple of plastic panels that are really easy to pull off you just pop them off and you'll get access to those t50 bolts as well so here comes the, the hard part um, the, and the only real difficult part outside of like pulling this thing out, and I will warn you, it is really heavy. Um, I'm a fairly decent sized guy and like it was hard for me to pull this thing out. Um, once you get to that point, I recommend you actually open up the seats and kind of like tilt it back first and then pull it out. That made it easier. So, but first let's get to the harder part. Now the hard part is actually removing the seat belts. Um, the reason it's difficult is because they basically sit in this area in here and there's also another cover that's extremely hard to remove when the seat's in place so what i oh also you'll have um there's no ac going back here by the way um i, I saw somebody online said that the rear seats have ac they don't they have a, uh, an electric fan underneath the seat and there's basically two plugs for it i kind of already tied mine up back here so that's like you, you can see the white plug and then there's a really small sorry guys really bad lighting really small black plug they'll be right kind of in this area under the seat you'll be able to access those so but basically what i recommend you do um is you you're gonna want to lift off one side of the seat up you kind of gonna want to have to like crawl in here sit maybe on this area or the back tailgate and then what you'll want to do is unscrew here, unscrew here. It's again a Phillips head. This will give you a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and then lift up the seat while pushing this, while pushing this in so it clears it. And then what I would do is just put like a rag or a towel here. Basically lift it up and try to move it onto here. Try to support it the best you can. And then that will give you access to... So that plastic panel that's basically blocking the bolt that's holding the seat belt in. And it's also another T50. So this is what it looks like right here. Sorry, again, very horrible lighting. Um, and what you'll want to do is you're going to get underneath 
and there's two clips. You basically have to get either a pry tool or a little screwdriver and just like pop it up and push the, the cover upward. Um, and basically that will let you do is it'll, the whole thing will slide up and off and that will give you side access um, to take the seat belts off. So once you take one off, now you're, you're, um, you're, you'll basically have a little bit more access on the other side so you don't have to do all kind of like the wiggling around to get it out. Just again, keep that, that side where it is, maybe grab another towel um, and lift up the other side, do the exact same thing, take the seat belts off. And, as I, and then you're free and clear basically. At that point, it's just a matter of getting the seat out of the car. Um, there was nothing else attached to it. All Everything else is like part of it. Um, it is very heavy. Um, I assume like 75 to 100 pounds. Like it's really heavy. It's surprising how heavy that thing is. Um, and that's it. So, and what I'm basically doing is I'm going to put um, this kind of standard size um, X5 tire. That's an 18 inch one. And um, I believe like most of the earlier models run these. And I'm going to, it's like, it, it clearly like it's, this is like, uh, clearly a setup for a spare. So, um, it fits in here perfectly. And I'm basically just going to, because it sits up higher than the floor, I'm, you know, creating a false floor, kind of a temporary floor basically for now. So we can put all of our cooler and everything else. And then our cargo box, um, where we used to carry that tire will have a lot more room in it. Plus it's, it's really heavy that, that tire as well. So it's not the most, it's not that you can't lift it up. It's just because how high it is and how big it is. It's just very clumsy. And I, that's like the last thing I'd want to do if I actually have a flat tire. So, um, but the nice thing is you do get to keep this thing in place, covers the battery and protected. You get your cubby for some of your little stuff. Like I carry the Jack in here, a tire repair kit, jumper cables. Um, and we'll still have our tire we'll still have it's gonna sit about two inches to three inches above like this little rail here so we'll lose a little bit of you know uh height but it's okay two hours later hey what's up guys and girls welcome back to the channel uh this is part two of the rear seat removal and uh temporary false floor uh with the spare tire full-size spare tire um for the x5 um, so let me just flip this for you. What I got so far. Um, obviously if you saw the previous video, I took the seat out, kind of made a recommendation on how to do it. Um, even though I kind of did it and then told you how to do it. So here's the false floor. Um, right now, basically it's, uh, there's the full size spare. The cubby is still here. And then, so right basically right now the, the, it's sitting right on the tire and then i'm going to put in a support on this side a support on that side and then you already see the support right here again this is just a um this is just temporary solution basically just for our trip um you know you can obviously make it really nice if you wanted to um i'm actually just even going to use a like a fleece blanket to wrap this up um, again, cause this isn't really going to stay around for a long time. And if it does, um, which I'm not really against, um, probably would just get some carpeting to match and then you'll have your, um, and you guys will, you know, have a nice looking trunk. Obviously if you wanted to also run the spare instead of running a full spare, um, it will definitely fit under, you just need to basically get, um, the back carpeting, flooring, whatever, out of an X5 that basically didn't come with a third row. So then I'll look factory. Um, that's not really my goal right now, but just to help you guys out, the measurements for this, it is... So I left a little extra room, but basically call it... Um, 38 and 7 eighths um lengthwise and then widthwise is 42 inches and again i left a little extra room here for to put the car uh, to put the blanket around I, I don't need it to be exactly perfect obviously you can do um quite a bit more so um i'm gonna basically 
drill some holes right now and put some long screws into this thing. Okay, lesson learned. Don't drop your drill bit onto this little part between uh, the panel <laughs> and the actual tailgate. Uh, I think mine fell in underneath my bumper. So, anyways, stay tuned. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to set up the other ones as well, and uh, I'll add that in the video here in a second. Okay guys, welcome back. So I put in a little bit of the side supports. Um, they actually support more towards the back. Um, I made them a little bit longer. Um, again, you can also add in a little bit more like right here if you want to support that. But to be honest, like, you know, that's, it's not really gonna go much anywhere and I don't plan on putting anything like really heavy on the corner. Um, but you could add a little bit more and then it'll be fully solid. And um, I'm gonna pull this out, just kind of show you guys the measurements. I did have to cut down the center support a little bit because it was actually um, angling the floor up and it was uh, not resting on the tire like I kind of planned. And uh, even now, like it's not fully resting on the tire, but as soon as we put some weight on it, this, the center of it's gonna dip a little bit. So, um, It'll be, so it's good. So let me pull this out and I'll show you guys the measurements. And you can kind of work off of those. Obviously you can make adjustments. Um, if this is gonna be a more permanent solution, I definitely would add a little bit more in here um, on this side support because it's really not doing much here. It's more on the back. And you know, you can get this to be super solid, but um, kind of like the less areas this thing rubs probably the better because I plan on putting everything back. Um, so let me, let me pull it right out and I'll show you guys. All right, guys and girls. So the reason actually I cut this down, um, I actually measured this out to be three inches, but then when I went to the store, they didn't have three, they had two by four. Um, so this is now three inches and now that's why it actually fits better. Cause that's the way I initially thought it was going to. Um, this is just a one and a half, um, high basically by three feet long and I guess one inch thick. And uh, so it's just right from the very front to almost towards the back, but it's like basically three feet is about perfect. Um, the reason you don't wanna go past that point is because towards the back, I'm sorry, the lighting here is horrible. Um, it actually goes up a little bit more. Um, so you would have to accommodate for that if you wanted to put uh, support. But again, you're only talking about like the last two inches that don't have support, so you shouldn't really have an issue there. Um, and that's it. Um, honestly, the only thing I am actually just going to do is clean up. I'm going to wrap this thing in a fleece blanket. Just again, this is a temporary solution, but obviously you can easily make some adjustments and go from here. Um, <clears throat> and as I mentioned, so it's like, it's carpeted back here. So yeah, you guys can't see that at all. Can you, um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. I don't have a flashlight here. Um, there we go. So it's carpeted right behind where the seat belt is. You can kind of see it goes up. And then it's just plastic here because this is where the other um, floor panel that comes with the car sits. So it sits flush here. Um, and then it's flush with the seats, basically, backs. Um, 
But that's really it. Um, I'll show you guys exactly what it looks like. It's a panda blanket, so like it's kind of funny, but um, yeah. Let me just put that in and we'll finish off the video. All right, guys and girls. So here it is. I don't, I don't know if you're ready. Here it comes. Panda floor. All right. Please subscribe. Please hit like, make a comment. I hope this helps you in some way or at least gave you some entertainment. Um, I'm going to throw some things in here and try to clean up a slight bit and go get some dinner. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned. Actually, we're going to take this out in a couple of days and change this uh, the coilovers um, from the EDC suspension. So that's going to be a nice write-up too because I didn't really, we haven't really seen enough good information out there actually on this change. So uh, stay tuned for that. Obviously, um, I don't do a lot of X5 um, content. It's mainly the, the car behind me here, the 30. But, uh, you know, it, it's all the same. All, all car life, all driver life. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.